Hello everyone, welcome to Smash for Dummies. I was inspired to make this video because my father who watches my content doesn't really know what's going on in Smash, he knows, kind of, but then I get into the up air back Sam and you know, that's basically how he talks about it. So I wanted to make a video that I could explain everything from the ground up with Smash Bros. If you already have a little experience, I did make a beginner's guide when Smash Ultimate came out, which is going to cover a good amount of stuff, but this is even more basic than that. Cause again, it's Smash for Dummies or older people. And I mean, I'm 31, I'm old in this community, so that's not said with any malice. So first off, what is Smash Bros? Smash Bros is a platform fighter invented by Nintendo, more specifically Laboratory Hal and Masahiro Sakurai, which is uh, just a fighting game of Nintendo characters. It started off on the N64 with this weird controller, and then it upgraded to the GameCube playing Melee, and then the Wii with Smash Bros Brawl, I don't know where a Wii mode is, uh, and then Smash for Wii U and Smash for 3DS came out, and then most recently, Smash Bros Ultimate. While the controllers used to look like this, most people playing are going to use one of the more standard controllers, being the Nintendo GameCube controller, although this is a newer version of that, or the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. These are going to be controllers that 99% of people use, especially if you're a Melee player, even more people use this one because this one doesn't work on the Nintendo GameCube. But also some people use a box style controller like myself, which basically replaces the need of the joysticks for buttons. Some people do that for wrist pain and ergonomic reasons, but I just like it because it makes a satisfying sound and then I got used to it and it's very cool. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using a GameCube controller just to simplify things. For Smash Ultimate, there are a lot of characters in this game, like so many, ridiculous amount. This is by far the most of any other Smash game, I think with 30 more than any other game, uh, so it's a lot. It ranges from characters that are iconic like Mario, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and Pikachu to more obscure characters like Min Min or Byleth. Even some third-party characters like Sonic or Minecraft Steve just from other popular video games that aren't necessarily Nintendo. Smash Bros has always run at 60 frames per second, meaning that the smallest unit of time you have in this game is one frame or 1 60th of a second. So the first big question, how do you play? Well, the point of the game is to hit your opponent into one of the blast zones, being the top blast zone, the side blast zones, or the bottom blast zone. If you can see here, the stage is basically like a little screen or a little rectangle, and if you go too far down or too far to the side, you die. Your lives are typically referred to as stocks in this game, so you basically are trying to take your opponent's stocks. As you hit your opponent, their percent at the bottom goes up. Every move does a certain amount of percent, and the higher your percent is, the farther you fly, making it more likely that your opponent gets hit into the blast zone, or that you get hit into a blast zone. So basically, you want to hit your opponent to raise their percent to hit them into a specific blast zone. Alternatively, you can choose to not get hit so that your percent doesn't raise so that way you don't get hit into a blast zone. First, let's talk about the standard controller, the GameCube controller. Like most Nintendo consoles, there's a B button, an A button, an a Y button, an X button. There are now trigger buttons, so R and L over here, as well as Z on this corner here. There is of course the main directional joystick. This is going to be how you move in the game. And then of course there is a C stick. I don't know why it's called the C stick. I think it's called the C stick as a holdover from the original N64 controller, which had the C buttons here on the side. So then when it became a joystick over here, it's a C stick. You can also call that the right stick if you are a PlayStation or an Xbox player. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. So everything that you do in the game is obviously possible with one controller. There are some techniques that maybe some controllers are easier, such as the box style controller that I used, or the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which if you look up here has an extra button on here, it has an extra bumper button as opposed to a trigger button. Each move does a different amount of damage or the percent it deals and has a different amount of knockback, which is the distance that your moves will all send. But hey, we're talking about moves here, so let's go over them really quick. There are some universal things that every single character has. Although you can customize your controls on your GameCube controller through the menu, I'm going to be talking about the default controls to make it as simple as possible. Every character, if you just hit the A button, has a jab. Every character has at least three tilts, being if you hold up and hit the A button, you get an up tilt, you hold down and hit the A button and you get a down tilt, or you walk forward and you hit A, and that gives you a forward tilt. And every character has three smash attacks where you basically flick the stick in a direction and hit the A button and you do stronger attacks. For example, if you flick up and hit the A button, you get an up smash. If you flick down and hit the A button, you get a down smash. If you flick forward and hit the A button, you have a forward smash. By default, your C stick will be a smash attack stick. So if you flick, this yellow stick in any direction, you'll get your smash attacks. Again, you can customize that. Most competitive players actually have this for their tilts. 
such as what I am showing here with Pikachu where I'm doing my tilt buttons. This is what you would refer to as tilt stick and the default is referred to as smash stick because your C stick is doing smash or tilt inputs. You also have your special moves often referred to as your B moves. So you have a neutral B or a neutral special. You have a side B or a side special. You have a down special and you have an up special. Your up special is almost always going to be your recovery move, which I will get into in a little bit. Your special moves are often referred to as your unique moves, uh, which are very different throughout the cast, whereas your tilts and your smash attacks are a little bit more universal. Now I'm going to be talking about the stats that a character can have. Every character in the game has different stats both on the ground and in the air. First off, everyone has a different speed that you can walk. Everyone has a different speed that you run. To show off this difference, I'm going to be running across the stage with Fox and Jigglypuff at the same time, and we will see just how much faster Fox gets there than Jigglypuff. A lot faster. So much faster. Now let's talk about jumping, because this is a platform fighter after all. There are also different stats in the air, between air speed, which is the horizontal speed that you move while you're in the air, as well as fall speed, the vertical speed that you fall when you're falling. Characters also have different jump heights, so some characters will jump a lot higher and a lot slower. And some characters even have multiple jumps. They're typically the puffball characters, Jigglypuff, Kirby, and King DDD come to mind. But if we jump at the same time, we'll first off see that these characters have different jump heights, but also Fox will get to the ground much faster because he has a faster fall speed than Jigglypuff. Even though Fox hits almost double the height of Jigglypuff, he still hits the ground sooner because his fall speed is much higher. If you fall quickly in the air, you're typically referred to as a fast faller, and if you fall slow in the air, you typically are called a floaty character. If you tap down while you are falling in the air, you also perform what is called a fast fall. If you see that little twinkle that happens as I start plummeting really fast, that's how you know that someone fast falls. There are also two ways to jump in general. There is what is called a full hop, which is what happens if you just hold one jump button for a bit, which is the higher jump. Then there is what is called a short hop, which you can do by a couple of different methods. You can either tap the jump button very quickly before you leave the ground, which is going to take three frames for every character, except for Kazuya, who takes eight frames. You can hold two jump buttons and you'll always get a short hop. This was added only to Smash Ultimate. Or again, another Smash Ultimate specific thing is you can do a jump while hitting your attack button and you will get an automatic short hop attack. Smash Bros is played on a variety of stages, so while some stages will look flat like the last one, oftentimes, and most of the time honestly, these stages have different platforms. How to get onto a platform? You jump. This is what separates Smash Bros from other fighting games you may have played like Street Fighter or Tekken. Jumping is a major aspect of Smash Bros, so let's talk about how it works. Every character has at least one ground jump and then one double jump, where you just hit the jump button in the air. That's typically going to be your Y or X button, but on default controls, you can also just hit the control stick up. Jumping with your control stick is typically called tap jump or stick jump, if you've heard people talk about that. While you are in the air, you can move left and right and basically control where your character goes. This is a major, major aspect of how people are going to be moving around and fighting in Smash Bros. So to round out movement, you have jumping, you have walking, you have running, where if you flick your stick, and I forgot to mention before, every character also has a dash attack where you hit the A button while you're running, which is a different ground move. Jabs, tilts, smash attacks, and dash attacks are all ground moves. When you are jumping, you have a subset of aerial moves, often referred to as blank aerial. So an up air, a forward air, a back air, a down air, and a neutral air, all corresponding to the direction you are holding on your control stick. Your shoulder buttons, R and L, are typically going to be used for a shield. This blocks incoming attacks, but as you see, it gets smaller over time, so if your shield gets too small, it breaks, or it just doesn't cover your body, so opponent's attacks can hit you through it. Now, it may seem hard to beat someone's shield because they're blocking all incoming attacks, but every character also has a grab. Every grab goes through shields. In these grabs, there are four ways to throw them. Down, forward, back, and up. Again, those throws will be different between characters, but every character has those type of throws. Unfortunately, part of this game is memorizing every single move that every character has, which is a lot. When you are in the air, you can control all these aerials with your C stick or your right stick, except for neutral air because you can't hit that stick neutrally in this game. Really quickly, a holdover from people typing it on forums and stuff like Twitter is the fact that people often shorthand a lot of aerials as whatever the first letter of that aerial is with air. So fair for forward air, bear for back air, down air is dare, nair is neutral air, and then up air or u air is up air. 
You can't use any of your ground moves in the air, your jabs, tilts, and smash attacks, but you can use all of your special moves in the air. Again, there are some exceptions to this, but for the most part, that's going to be the case. So, in summation, you move with your left stick, you do attacks, normally your smash attacks, tilts, jabs, and aerials with the A button. Again, you can also use the C stick to replace some of those. You do your special moves with the B button, you jump with the Y and X buttons, you shield with the R and L buttons up here, and you grab with the Z button. Again, you can change all of those, you can change it to however it sees fit, but those are the default controls of the game. By default, you also have three taunts for every character using this little D-pad. The down taunt, the side taunt, and the up taunt. Those are for fun or for flash if you get a cool kill on your opponent. So I talked about up specials or up Bs being the main recovery move. Well, what does that mean? Well, as you can see, most stages have a little fighting platform here, but then a bunch of space around the outside of the stage to basically make it so that there's only a platform on some of the stage. That means at some higher percents, you can knock your opponent or throw your opponent off the stage. And well, of course, they have to recover. Because again, if you don't recover and you fall, you lose your stock. So what does that entail? It often uses your double jump as well as any recovery moves that you have. For example, Pikachu's up B, his quick attack, is a really good recovery move because I can angle how I want to recover and grab the ledge or just go back on stage from really, really far off. It is very, very useful. Almost all stages at the like edges of them have what is called a ledge. It's a space you can grab so you don't always have to recover directly onto the stage, which of course would make you vulnerable. The ledge has its own subset of options such as ledge roll, getup attack, ledge jump, neutral getup. You can wait on the ledge for quite a while before the game kicks you off of it. Let's just wait. Wow. And you can also drop off the ledge by hitting back or down on your control stick. That allows you to do your double jump immediately, so a lot of times people will do drop off, double jump into aerial, often referred to as a ledge hop. Something that is also unique about the ledge is that, you see that Pikachu's flashing right there? That means that Pikachu is invincible. So when you grab the ledge for the first time, you are unable to be hit. There are a few instances of people getting invincibility. When you lose a life or a stock, you spawn on what is called the Angel Platform, and you have about a second to two seconds of just pure invincibility where you can rush down your opponent. Or set up whatever your strategy is for the next stock. And there are situations where you get sent to the ground and you are in what is called a tech situation. Doing a tech is when you hit the shield or grab button right before you're about to hit the ground and you do a special animation. Those are all invincible for a little bit. You can either tech in place, tech roll away, tech roll in, or you can also miss your tech. That allows you to roll to the left, the right, get up attack, or hold up and neutral get up. Some characters also just have moves that are invincible for parts of them. A very famous one of that is Marth's up B, where he is literally invincible on the first available frame. The frame is what the games play at, it's 60 frames per second. So the first frame of the move up until the sixth frame of the move are purely invincible, and then the attack comes out, so it's very hard to mess with. Almost all up specials have this little upward arc, or at the very least some way to control it to move it up, because again, the game is designed for you to recover. When you are shielding, you have a couple of options available to you other than just holding shield. First off, you can always jump out of shield, which is going to be very useful for getting out of situations that you don't want to be in. You can just jump away from the situation. This also allows you to do your aerials out of shield because you jump and hit a button. You have some invincible options such as your rolling to the left and the right which is just done by holding shield and tapping left or right. And you have a spot dodge or a sidestep where you basically just are invincibly in place. This is very useful if you think your opponent is going to grab because you can simply avoid the grab and punish them. Additionally, you can both up smash and up B out of shield. But even though it's universal, the usefulness of this depends on the character because of the attributes of every character's up smash and up special moves. And for the final mechanic around shields, this has changed a bit from the previous games that used to have power shielding, but for this game, you have the ability to parry. If you release your shield as your opponent is about to hit you, you get this little flash animation which makes the move less safe on shield and you have the ability to now do your ground moves out of shield which normally wasn't possible. You would have had to drop shield or like let go of the shield button in order to do that but that takes a long time whereas parrying is essentially instant. Every character's moves have a different amount of knockback, so even though tilts are generally your weak move and smash attacks are generally your strong moves, that's not always going to be the case. Perfect example of this is Snake's up tilt. Snake up tilt kills at 110 around that uh, against Diddy Kong. 
Whereas his up smash doesn't necessarily kill at those percents. Especially when you factor in the next thing I'm going to be talking about, which is DI. DI, or directional influence, is the ability for you to influence the direction in which you are sent by holding a direction. For example, by holding in, I'm able to make this up tilt by Snake send me less far into the air because I have the ability to change the trajectory in which it is sent. For example, with no DI, this up tilt kills Diddy Kong at about 105%. However, with correct DI, in this case that would be behind Snake, the up tilt no longer kills at 105 because the angle is just different and it doesn't send as far. Every move in the game has a correct way to DI it in terms of kill potential, which again, is a lot of memorization. As a general rule for survival DI, or DI that is trying to get you to not lose your stock immediately, you are going to want to DI perpendicular to vertical moves, so left or right, uh, for moves that hit you up, but for moves that hit you left or right, you're just going to hold in. So a move that sends you to the right, you want to DI to the left, and a move that sends you to the left, you want to DI to the right. Competitive rule sets often have three stocks, or again three lives, with a timer attached to them. This is to ensure that Games end in a relatively timely manner, because if we didn't have a timer, there would be no incentive for a losing player to approach, which can lead to crazy circumstances like this Smash 64 set that had one game last 50 minutes. That's 5-0 by the way, not 1-5. If we're able to string different moves together, that is what's called a combo. Combos are often easier at low percents because your opponent isn't flying as far, so you can get a lot of percent at early percents. Certain characters have stronger combos than others, it's just the different designs of the characters. Platforms can sometimes help combos, but sometimes make them a little bit more difficult, so again, it's going to be based on your specific character. DI actually influences combos a lot, but again, the way you are specifically supposed to DI each combo varies on the character and the combo that your opponent's character is going for. If you are hitting your opponent while they are off the stage and trying to recover, that is what is often referred to as edge guarding, because you are guarding the edge of the stage from them, and it is a very easy way to get early stocks. There are certain characters that are better at edge guarding, typically characters with better recoveries or moves that send low off stage, but every character in theory can edge guard. If your opponent is on the ledge and you are trying to prevent them from getting back on the stage, that is what is called ledge trapping. You are trapping them on the ledge of the stage. That, in combination with edge guarding, can be very powerful. If your opponent is above you and you are preventing them from getting down, typically with your own up aerials or up tilts and up smashes, that is what is called juggling. Typically, the combination of juggling, edge guarding, and ledge trapping is what is called the advantage state, when you are in an advantageous position compared to your opponent. Being in those bad positions, so getting juggled, getting edge guarded, or getting ledge trapped, is what is called the disadvantage state. When you and your opponent are both trying to hit each other, that is typically what is called neutral, when you are both trying to find an opening in a neutral situation. Generally, if you are to think of the strengths and weaknesses of one character versus the strengths and weaknesses of another character, and you find that, you know, certain aspects of it are advantageous for one character, that's typically what's just called thinking of a matchup. For example, Pikachu has a winning matchup on Ganondorf because he has better ways to approach, better combos, and can edgeguard Ganondorf very well, whereas Ganondorf basically only has a very strong kill potential, but is also slower and harder to get hits in. And yeah, I think that is everything you need to know in Smash for Dummies. If you feel like I left anything out or you're still confused, let me know down in the comments below. I would appreciate it. And as always, social media stride and partner stuff is down below. And I'll see you all next time. Have fun smashing. Peace.